What up, YouTube? Um, it's Andrea Maria. It's a new day, a new beginning. Guess who's here? It's Nadia Maria. I don't want to bother her too much. Was she about to wake up? I know she hear my voice. She's been sleeping for quite some time. I breastfeed, toast breastfeed, so like I can feel that she's about to wake up soon. <laughs> I got feel it. Look, I might be all over the place with this video. This is my update. Okay, where do I start? Where do I start? Thank you to all my friends from all over the world who has been writing me, who has been encouraging me, who has been listening to my stories since the very beginning when I started talking about being alone and pregnant, the hurtful times and the joy and all that. Oh my God. So last Friday, a week from today, my baby made a week old today. Last Friday, the day was cool. Like, um, I was feeling different. I was feeling these light kind of pains. Like, at first it started off like, like I was catching, I was short of breath, like a little bit, and I had to stop. It's so heavy, I thought maybe just that. I'd have to stop doing what I was doing and just pace myself and keep on whatever. I just went to Walmart. Hey, doogie, doogie. Hey, doogie, 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 doogie. My dog. You learn to give, you gotta give both of them attention so they don't, so he on trip. But anyway, that's story. I was in Walmart. I guess like it was a natural nesting, getting prepared for what was gonna happen, being alone or whatever. I figured I needed to go ahead and go get some stuff that I'd be able to easily cook for, make for myself, microwave dinners and just pop up in a microwave. I know I wouldn't go be able to cook it up to had a baby and stuff. So. I went on and did that and it was it was weird. It was like and I met this guy, he was like, um, he worked at Walmart and he stopped me and he was like, Oh, how far pregnant are you? And he was like, Oh, I have a girl that's my girlfriend is pregnant and there was so many little problems that they were having and we talked for a good like 15, 20 minutes. Are you supposed to be stocking shelves and I was supposed to be shopping, but that conversation went on and was good. And at the end of the conversation I was like, you know, sometimes in life things happen just so we so things like this can happen. We can have a conversation and, and relate to each other and stuff, you know. So they had had little issues and problems to where they want to go be together, but he wanted to be there for the child, and I was able to tell him yes. Even though y'all not going to be together, be there for the child. That's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Just, just man up and say, okay, your business, because it took two to do to do it, and, and, you know, make it do what it do. So that's what that, ha that happened. You know, that was that afternoon. And later on in the day, uh, came home 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock. Started feeling more, you know, I got in the car, just sat in the car and called my sister and we was talking and she was telling me about how much time she wanted a pregnancy to get my niece or something. She got two. Many, many years ago, they all 20, that she had drove herself, you know, I was like, because I was telling her I had no, really no ride. I didn't want to be waking nobody up and calling church members and stuff. But I was telling her how I was feeling and stuff went short. And the doctor had said, wait till your five, your contractions are five minutes apart. But the way that I was reading on web you know on these different web pages and stuff like that websites and talking to people like the they it just didn't feel like it still felt like a breaks and hit phones you know what i'm saying like i felt them but they it was soft like it, it hurt it but then it was like you know just soft it didn't really feel like it had time and then i started writing it down and didn't really feel then i started getting real nervous but i'm always kind of nervous and anxiety and excited and stuff but not always but it's just certain things were in excitement like i'm excited now and then I I started feeling more, a little more, and I talked to one of my homegirls, and she was like, "Girl, you need to go in. You need to go." I was like, "Girl, no, I'm." I was like, "I'm not ready yet. I need to, I need to put on some eyelashes. I need to do my hair." Like I was looking through the bag that I had packed, and like absolutely shit was in there. Like I was like, "What the fuck did I pack? I didn't even pack right. I didn't have the gowns. I didn't have enough change of gowns and stuff that I needed and underwear. We gotta talk about that too, y'all. Y'all have to be prepared." Make sure your bag is ready and you have the things that you need. You need pads because girl is going down. I'm talking about float, Niagara Falls. You need, well, actually use the hospital pads. If you know where you're at and where you're from, you know what I'm saying? Well, I got to talk to people from different countries and stuff. I know how they treat y'all up. But you're going to need some pads. I'm talking about like the pins type shit. You know what I'm saying? If you want to bring your own, if you want to buy, bring your own underwear. That's on you, but you about to mess all of them up. So you're going to need some big, comfortable underwear. Get a pack of old grandma whiteys and you know be throwing them things away or just use the hospital ones they got mesh shit you probably get in jail type shit whatever but they gonna get fucked up anyways i forgot all about that 
None, none of the things I needed in my bag was there. I didn't bring snacks. You know what I'm saying? You can eat what you want over here in the cafeteria and stuff, whatever. But like after a certain time, like I was still hungry. The, the eating was helping me get to the thing. So anyway, so they seemed like they were getting rougher. But I was like, man, I'm about to do my hair. I curled my hair. Uh, um, I finished the bag as I, uh, I thought I did. I was like, put everything to the door just in case or whatever, right? Ended up, I was like, man, this ain't nothing. Still them little fake little breaks of hits. I'm going to be induced on Tuesday, on the Tuesday, so just going to chill out or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada. So, then, I went down. I laid down. I laid down like I was going to sleep for the night. Well, I was tossing and turning. I caught myself in my sleep. I was, uh, uh, like, ugh. The pain would increase. And it's like, Probably like the cramps that you have when you first started your cycle. Like like if you were real young and you was like really, really like that. Like it started hurting like that. It was like this pain. It was like I hurt from the inside. Like oh. And it comes and it only lasts for a few seconds though. And then you're like fine again. And you're like, am I okay? That's how it was for me. Then, like I said, I was laid back down. Then all of a sudden I felt some a trickle. And I had just went to the bathroom and peed, so I knew I didn't pee on myself. And I was like, my water had broke. But it wasn't like you see on TV and they talking about this flash, just flush, or people talking about it just, whoosh. it was just a little bit of, it just a little bit of, a little something, something had came or whatever. And I kept, I kept wearing panty liners. I'll tell y'all, I keep it straight up while everything. I kept using panty liners so I could see what was going on, keep up with what everything I always did, wearing panty liners, so I think that's. That's just good protection. Keep an eye on yourself and take care of yourself and everything like that. Anyways, and I was like, I noticed something different. I was like, mm -hmm, maybe I need to go in. So, all right, it's about midnight. You no, know, midnight, one o'clock. So, I finally, I was like, okay, look, I need to go ahead and go. I need to go in. So, I was like, all right, I'm gonna drive myself. I was so. Oh my god, I was so nervous, y'all. Oh my god, I was so nervous. I am still nervous. This brings about a change on you. I forgot about it. everything, everybody else. Just me and this baby about to come up out my. Oh lord, I was like, lord, lord, lord. I wasn't crying. I wasn't weak no more. Tough, toughness had came in me. I was like, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. My hospital nine minutes away, so I went to the hospital. It was like empty, like nobody was there. I said, parked on the garage. And everything and I'm like what the hell and I had to I was supposed to go all the way around right and as I was walking the security guard was like you okay ma'am you need some help I said I think I'm in labor he said hold on a sec security gave me VIP in the wheelchair to me to, the, to, to um so I needed to be in labor and delivery and they checked me in they checked the monitor and everything and they said um well you're definitely not going home Pain is real. It was just me and the doctor. He asked me, was the father going to be there for the delivery? And I said, no, it's just us. The pain kept increasing. It got real bad. They, it's like they left me in the room for a while. They took me to where, like, the other room where you, where you go when you really, when you time to push and stuff, right? It's a little more comfortable, a little more house-like setting. And I was in there, and I just started, when the pain would come, I started screaming, like, and I said, I'm sorry, it hurts. But I gotta scream. Y'all, I hurt him bad. They kept coming, the contractors kept coming, it was like, all right, they had to induce whatever, cause like, so I can start, um, right? You know, water wasn't breaking all the way. I, don't, I can't remember exactly the procedure that they did or whatever. But. And the pain just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming back to back. Then it got real close. 
and it started to hurt just a little bit. And I just like I, it was so painful. It was painful. I can't. Uh, I can't really say what if. I can't say what it really felt like. So I don't know. It hurt it. Was so messed up about it because it, it it's it's in minutes and then it stops, so you can breathe again. But oh, when it come back, you be and then like it, as it start, it start coming regularly to where you can predict where it's about to come, and you're like, oh, you, you start trying to mentally fix yourself for that coming. But it hurts so bad you can't even fix it tomorrow. But you know, it's time to push. I can remember the nurses being there and they was like, oh my gosh, she's coming. I have a legs up. Someone have my legs up. I need to go to no Lamar's classes or any of that. And everybody in there was so special. But thank God for everybody that was there for me. He orchestrated it. He did. So she was about to come out and they had doctors in the halls. They had they was like, she's coming. They said, we're gonna get the doctor. She was about to come out. And the nurse was on the side of me holding my hand. She was telling me how you put your chin in your chest. See when she contracts your coming loose. And they all directed to me. They, she held my hand. And I, it was like just so overwhelming. You like all these feelings. You're just like, what's going on? It's like, you don't even think about being alone no more because you got people around you. You may not be who you wanted to be, but you just grasp in the moment. You're like, oh my God. And then you push. And I push. And she was like, this is it. This one more place. And I can say one more place. <laughs> oh God. And I push. Oh my God. When I seen her face. I was like, oh my. It was like, kind of like in a movie. I didn't cry. When I seen her, I did not cry. It was like this over joyous feeling of, oh my God, she is so pretty. Oh my God. Like all the nine months I had just flashed all the pain and the sorrow and the hurt and the unforgiveness. <laughs> it just went away. And I was like, I forgive y'all. Look what I got. These are not tears of anger or frustration or sadness or unforgiveness. It's joy. Oh my God. They <laughs> cut her blue her name clear. I got to how they let me hold her really through up to my chest. I was so in love. I cannot believe this is, this is my baby. This is like, this is me. This is a part of me. This little me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, thank you, Lord, thank you, you know, like, thank you, like, I just started to understand, like, why everything was happening, why all this pain, why everybody was turning against me, why, why everything and everybody was out of control around me, because somebody special was about to come into the world. <laughs> One of the girls that wrote me was like, do I still think about the, my baby's father? Do those feelings go away? Nope. And the joy comes. But when the baby's here, it's kind of, it gets a little frustrating. The first night was hard in the hospital. I, I had, you'd be so tired from the delivery and the medication and everything, the epidural and stuff. And then the baby coming, you gotta like, try to hurry, like, try to adjust to the baby and do this. And, and be up and she's crying and it's in the middle of the night and it's every few minutes and you're like oh my god I, I can remember holding her and I was so tired and I was like like I kept shaking and I was like I was trying to like you know remember I'm holding the baby and, and like you know like I'm so tired and I'm just like I was breaking down almost and I was like no I can do this I could go home we can go home and I can do this I'm gonna be alright we'll be alright and I was just excited 
And I ended up having them. I ate the nurse. I was like, I can take her away. You know, they took us to the nursery so I can get some rest a little bit. Just needed to rest a little bit. And they talked to me about breastfeeding. And I started that immediately. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Um. <laughs> Oh God, it's wonderful. Like I said, some of the nights, no, I still think about him. I still, like, especially when she up and it's a little night and she crying and I'm tired and I'm like, oh my God, if he could just been holding her for me. And I started thinking about him and I started crying and I'm, I still care about him. And I don't think that feeling ever go away. Every time I look at her, I see him. Um. And I think about what we had and da, 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 everything. In my heart, I'm so forgiving. It's like you can shoot me and I'm be like, I'll forgive you. It's okay. Can we be friends? Oh, God. So those feelings don't go away. You know what I'm saying? You just got to remember whatever's meant is meant. If it's not, then it is what it is, but you have to keep forward and you have to keep going on and you have to sometimes you have to tell yourself you have to preach to yourself and let yourself say hey self I can do this I can get through this I can get up I done adjusted I, I, I work around with her a lot of people be like oh sleep when the baby sleep and rest when the baby rest and I am by myself okay I have a household to run I cannot be in my house and my things are out of order and the thing, this and that and that, I got a little dog, I love my little dog, I gotta go take him walk, I gotta wash clothes, I gotta wash dishes, I gotta maintain, I gotta, all of that, so I can't just sleep, I, I can't do that like that. So I have to learn my own routine on how it works for me, and learn the baby and everything like that. I can't listen to all this and the outsiders, you gonna learn, you gonna learn your baby, you gonna learn how your baby is and how you need to adjust and when it's time to sleep you gonna know exactly when it's time to, hey she laying down i got her real good she's full i'm gonna lay down right now and i'm gonna catch it get it out your mind that you're gonna be sleeping eight and nine hours a night that that is not happening no more okay think like an athlete you just came out the hospital and my home girl told me over there in the uk you got six hours after after labor and delivery and they put you at the hospital. In America, we get two days to live in the, to stay in the hospital. So if they can do that after six hours, and the people in, uh, you can see in the foreign countries, they be having, they don't even go to the hospital. And they, they got the baby, they hold, they, a couple of days later, you see the, the thing on their head, and they washing clothes, and the baby hanging on the titty eating, and they still moving strong, and they a strong woman doing her thing. Then that's to do, think like an athlete. Don't overexert yourself. Know when it's time to chill. Know if you're feeling pain. Know how to lift things like with your knees or with your legs, using your leg muscle or using, you know, not don't use your stomach muscle. Don't be trying to ask, know what you can do for you to make it work for you. Don't listen to the outsiders and shit because they really don't know your story like you don't, especially when you're on your own by yourself and you got to make still your world has to turn. But you will find it. You will work it. Like I said, a lot of them feelings don't, they don't just wash away because if it was anything like mine, to me, we both love each other at that time and that moment and my baby was created in love. She is a jewel of love, like, because I think, I believe he loved me and I loved him too and that's what happened. So, this is my love, my joy. I love family. <laughs> I got my dog to he doesn't come he like this, but he know he don't get in her face. He don't be trying to, you know what I'm saying? I got him. But you have to show them both equal attention, like to like show don't forget mom, let him feel like lonely or whatever, you know, too much. If you can see him, you know, talk to him, still play with him and stuff like that. Let him know that he's a part of the family, they a part of the family too. I love my dog. That's all I ever had. Dogs and babies are just the most loyal people and they don't come with no bullshit, no crap. Anyways, I've been yappity yappity. Um, thank y'all so much for listening to my story and encouraging me. Like I said, you can email me anytime. M S Andrea A N D R E A Maria M A R I A eighty one at gmail dot com. I answer everybody back if you just want to tell me something about what you're going through or 
whatever, share something you need, you need ask me about anything that I've been through. I'm very open. I do not hide anything. I ain't got nothing to hide. I don't care what other people feel like. As long as I don't mention names and just be the, just derogatory shit and just try to bring people down, I say what I feel. I, I mean, it is what it is. I'm going through this as I go through this. Now, how the story ends, I do not know. Only God knows. But I know that my ending will be better than my beginning. But I must go through to get to the end, and that's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? I take it one day at a time. I enjoy every moment. And I remember to, I have to give myself self-talks and say, I'm going to get through this. You're crying. It's all right. I stay calm. Can't get mad. You know? It's a little innocent where she cried. She got gas. She just got into the world. Like, damn. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, whatever. She like, tell them what all this is. So they cry. They weep. They, they get hungry. They get wet. You got to tend to that. It's, they ain't on no clock. They was in the stomach. In the womb for nine months. So give them a little chance or whatever. So I try to keep everything on the outside that may bring. I don't answer my phone all the time. Somebody even calling me from a block number. Like, I don't know who that is. I don't, I don't have time for no bullcrap. I want nothing but love around me and peace. Some of my family members I have to let, you know, stay back, love them from a distance and everything. I want nothing but joy, peace. So for any tears, I can be of joy. Or maybe if I just have a little bit of stress, I just gotta let it go. Just wash it in. Just wash it in. Um, I'm gonna do some yoga tonight. After I eat my milk and cookies. So now, oh, it's just been a quality time with her. I use this a lot. I do my I walk. My doctor said no exercise, I walk, and I've been doing that. It took me two days to just put a piece right here on my hair on this side, and I cut I cut the rest off. So it's just easy. It's cool for me. It's so hot out here. It took me two days because I had to do it in between her. First day, I don't even know if I got a shower in. All that you don't have to work. Today we went to the grocery store. For, it was her doctor's appointment. Went to the doctor's appointment. That was so good. Healthy baby. She's seven pounds now. She was born at eight, but she lost a little bit. And he said that's normal. That's fine. That happens. Which is good because I don't want no fatty, fatty, fatty. Anyways, um, we went to the grocery store today. I was so nervous. Everything is nervousing right to me. Like getting back in the car, having a baby in the back seat of the car. I, my daughter is six. My oldest daughter is sixteen. I have no. I don't remember none of that stuff. I wasn't even ready then. I was 16 when I had her, so like that was crazy. Oh, girl, grocery store, I was so nervous. I was like, I didn't know how to hold her. First, I got the big cart, and I was like, I don't even need all this stuff. I really needed the big cart, and I was like, I didn't even know how to push the big cart with her. I had her in this at first, and I, I mean, I see the other people like they have the baby in the car seat. I didn't know what's everything was nerve wracking. I used the, the I had changed her diaper and the, and the diaper change and say, well, I know. I was like, oh my god. All this is just very, very new again. It's like the feelings. It's overwhelming. So maybe some of y'all is just easy to you and you're laughing like, oh, I got that. And But for y'all who keep it real and who need to know if you felt like I felt, I'm just keeping it real. Oh my God, it's like I'm a probably. But I'm enjoying it all. It's good. I got my natural hot thing going on. I'm going to relax. I'm going to drink me some green. I got some green tea decaffeinated. I'm gonna get a high off of that. Oh, natural highs right now. Um, enjoy my little family. I love y'all. Thank you so much. All over the world, Ireland. Love you. Um, is it baby? Is it? I don't want to say the wrong name. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna send a shout out on my next video. Everybody from the UK. I don't. I'm not a pronounce your name either. The one you've been emailing me. I don't want to say. I don't want to say your name and I say it wrong. Everybody in the UK, all around the world, all the little babies around the world. I love my baby. Thank you. Thank y'all so much for listening to my story. Like I said, it hurt, and some days it still hurt, but it's all right. Cause after the pain, after the pain. We sit and we talk about it, and I welcome you. You are glad sight to see, and after the rain, you got the nerve to still call me baby, and I fight with all my might. 
to hold back the tears from falling with a pleasant smile after the pain you got the nerve to still call me baby Gonna start crying. I gotta feed him. <laughs> Push. Push. Hold on, TJ. Ooh. Ooh. Don't take the don't take the spotlight. This is the baby spotlight. They saw you in the other video. Excuse me, y'all. <laughs> Don't take the spotlight. You wait. This is her spotlight. <sighs> it's baby Nadia, y'all. Look at that double chin. They don't have necks this small. It's so funny. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a close up. Look at sugar. Say hey, world. Say hey, world. Yeah, is she pretty, y'all? Let the camera focus. You know, say we gonna be a movie star. You learn to be a movie star. You learn to be a movie star, baby. Look. That's a little face because she breastfeeds. I, I mean, I, I hungry. I hungry. I hungry, mommy. Ain't she cute? Stop moving. I got an old camera. All right, y'all. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>